Explain singletons in under three minutes? Yeah, I'll try. Okay, so this is a game scene. It instances a player scene, which is a kinematic body 2D. And if you let me show you the code, here it has. So what happens is it sets the variable name to a random string from the array names, and then it'll just print it. So here you go, look at the bottom left corner, there you go, print. Now, I actually just forgot to put randomize, so let me put that in quickly, I'm very smart. And now, here we go, it'll just generate a random name and print it. Right, I'm just going to add a folder in here, it's going to be called global, because that's what I'm going to name it. And I'm going to right click on it and uh, select add script, and then I'm going to name the script global variables. Right, so now I can click on it and start editing. I'm going to initiate the variables I need, which in this case it's player name. Right, now this is a very important bit. I'm going to click project, project settings and auto load. And now I can select my path for the thing, so global and then the script, and press add. And it will automatically name the uh, singleton after the script. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my label's text to the player's name. Uh, I'm just going to label dot text equals, and now in order to access anything from the a uh, singleton is very easy. You just type the name of the singleton and what variable you want to access. And I just put string before it and convert it into a string. Right, here we go. This should now be completely functional and we should get the thing. But we actually forgot to set the uh, singleton's variable to the player's name. So if you just type global variables, variables and do what we did before, you can both set and get from this sort of code. So there we go. And now it should be working and we can start the game. And if you press the button, yes, it's John. That's good. Right, now to show you other, what other things a singleton can be used for, I've created this piece of code. What it will do is it will generate the a player every time I press the button, and it will give it a name, and it will print the name, and it will wait a second, and then it will delete the player. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? If you just look here, he spawn him, and he deletes, and we spawn him, and he deletes every time there's a new name. Cool. Right, so in order to create this player, we first needed to declare a variable, which is a preload of the player's path. And this is this is a viable solution. But if you're going to have a big and intense game for the components of the computer, uh, then you'll be calling preload a lot. So what I like to do is I like to create my own singleton and then put all my preloads in there that I'll be using. Maybe a few singletons with different preloads for different things. But you get the idea, and then you just access it from there by typing player, uh, the world the singleton name and then player, instead of player equals preload and then player's path. It just works a lot nicer in bigger projects. Right, so I just finished setting up my loader singleton and in order to prove it works, I'm just going to uh, run the game and show you.